by the way, second session of the day. Um, I always write my own small disclaimer, you can take pictures whatever you want, but you can also ask for the deck on me. If there's anything in my tool that doesn't work, you can come to me and I will try to fix it. So who am I? My name is Wouter Kirsten. I work for ControlUp as a professional service engineer. I'm a technical account manager. I do all kinds of wizardry stuff with stress calculations. Got all kinds of certifications, VExpert, I'm a code coach. I blog at retao.nl, you see my email address, my GitHub address. And I have a new hobby called Photography. And that, that meerkat was looking fine at me, so I thought, why not put him in? Um, what I'm going to tell about today. Earlier this year, I released a tool called the Ryzen Golden Image Deployment Tool. It was based in PowerShell 7. And the project for that started around this time last year. Why I created that is because I always made short scripts with the Ryzen APIs. I made some working stuff, but I wanted to build my own fling, actually. I was always into the flings, doing those kind of things. I was like, I want to build something. And the only thing I was familiar with to create something with a user interface was PowerShell, using the Windows presentation framework. Uh, some of the things I did were, worked only in PowerShell 7. What that tool did, it would use an XML file to keep configuration, like also get the password in there in that same XML file. But still it was PowerShell, and not all companies allow PowerShell 7 to be installed. I also could not really create an executable out of it, because almost all anti-malware, if they see an executable and a PowerShell script comes from that, they was like, no, they don't like it, they will kill it off immediately. So a few months ago, I started a new project. I completely rewrote the code for the entire tool in Python 3. Uh, I used parts of my existing module that I created, the Ryzen module for the Python module for Ryzen. It uses tkinter for GUI. I have a zip file already. I have a link at the end of the session so you can download what I'm showing here. Config is still saved in an XML file, but it is used in the application directory for where you say the active application is, so you can store it in, in the DEM profile or Avis Logics or whatever you do. Uh, it does not have the password in there anymore. I am using now the uh, Windows Credential Manager, or if you run it as a script on Mac, it will store it also in the Mac Credential Store. So if you run the, powers, the Python script itself, you can also run the tool on the Mac. Uh, I'm trying to uh, build an application for Mac out of it, but that's proving to be quite challenging. So right now for Mac, you just use the script. But so actually, what does the tool look like? So here I am. I started at the VDI, but first we need to do some configuration there. I put in an address for one of the connection servers. You'll see me put in my username a domain, and after that, I will ask myself for a password. And there's the option there to save password or not, because some security departments might not like you saving the password on the machine itself, or you, it changes all the time, and you need to pull it from a uh, password saver or something. And after you enter that password, you hit test credentials. It will try to connect to that connection server that you gave. When it does that, it also pulls in information from all pods in the cloud pod strategy. So if you have cloud pod, it will also connect to the other ones and it will test the connections there. I actually see that the pod is not populating here. I'm not sure why it used to do that. So uh, yeah, this might be a bit small. So just to show what we are looking at, it's a desktop. It's one pool. It has one default image configured right now. No secondary image. It's using a snapshot named summer 2023. Of course, that's the, the pool that they, or the image that they use. And my goal, what I will show you here, is we need to deploy a secondary image. Because there was a hotfix needed in this image. They needed some settings there, and it was too big. So there's 10 desktops in it. They're all on the same image there. So what I'll go now, I'll go to the VDI pool step. All the things I'm showing here today are in the VDI pool step, but the RDS farms works exactly the same. The only thing different there is that it doesn't have the VTPM button. So what I do is I, you select the desktop pool here, and once you have connected, it will actually show all desktop pools in the entire CloudBot. 
if you have one with a duplicate name, it will add the pod name to it. Here it will show for that specific pool what are the available golden image VMs. And then there's also the, the source snapshot that will be used to apply with the golden image. Here you also have some information, okay, the, the pool name, what's the state, uh, what's the current image state, is there a secondary image there right now, or this one it's not. And at the right you see all configuration options. Stop on error. These are all the things that you can also see in the admin interface. But the tool itself makes it just a bit easier so you don't have to connect to each admin interface for each pod and go in there and do all the clicks. You can do it from one tool. That's all the options. Stop on error, wait for log off, whatever you want. You can schedule an image. Uh, you can resize it and I will do that for this one. So what I will do here is I will go and select my new golden image now. It's the same VM. Okay, it will change the snapshots that are available for that one. I need to do the summer 2023 hotfix. I have selected those and what I will now do, I'm going to select, I'm going to push it as a secondary image. I just want to test it on a few desktops first. I'll select five desktops here. Uh, you can also do percentage of desktops. It will always take the first XX amount of desktops that it will apply the image to. And what I also do, and that's something that was added in 2206, or Ryzen 2206, you can resize your uh, machines from here. So even if you make your, uh, your golden image with four CPUs and you give it 16 gigs of RAM because that just makes the creation of the image faster, here you can select I want. Well, in this case, they still work, by the way, with one gig and one core. It will not perform well, but you, you can log on. From my lab, that's enough. I selected that, and now I will hit the button to deploy the golden image. So you see, everything goes gray now. You, we can still select a different desktop pool, but this one we cannot anymore because it's already deploying something. If I hit refresh here, you'll see it is. Pro there's progress with secondary image, it's busy publishing it, it's this snapshot that's being deployed there. So it's coming. And in the admin interface you'll see also a bit of progress. And when you look at the VMs themselves, you see 5 out of 5 are getting a new image there. If I do another refresh, at some point, you see the image is a state ready held, so it's ready to be used and it's now deploying the new uh, snapshot to, to these machines and you can you also see right now because there's a secondary image set you see there's an option to cancel the secondary image that button has been activated now you can apply the secondary image to even more machines of, or less machines or you can just promote that the secondary image to the primary image again you see here uh, secondary image is already held there from the admin interface with this one I will promote it to the primary image here. No, I want to say, I was going to click that. And now all the things will be done to make this secondary image the primary image. Now, when I hit refresh, it will go there again. And again, when you do that, your secondary image, 1 VM, it's now pushing the image, making it the final, the, the definitive golden image. And you see on the machine side, the other five machines are also getting the new image while well, the first five already have it. Uh, with this example, I'm actually uh, not continuing. Okay, so this is how it's showing at some point. And you see it's now done with promoting that image. And on the machines, you see it's all there. But wait, I made this pool really small. I'm going to have connected now, I'm going, I've refreshed I got the information there, and this time I am actually going to deploy a new image. Oh, I'm going to need a new full image, but this one is for further in the future. I want this image ready so I can use it in next week, so it's already ready for the deployment that night or something like that. You can select the date. I'm a bit slow there. Uh, the hours and minutes are a bit funky because I couldn't find a really well combination date and time picker for Tikinto, so I had to manually essentially make this. It's still a bit iffy there, but remember, I'm not a programmer. I am an admin guy 
who wrote this and created this, and I'm not that good at it yet, so I'm still learning, but it works. And I select 5.30 a.m. in the morning to actually deploy that image. And I am... No, I have to res resize it first. Because it needs a bit more power there. And then I hit the, hit the deploy uh, golden image button again and it will be going. I will skip this a bit faster because I don't have that much time left anymore. And you see the image is ready, it's ready for use. It's not applied to any desktops here right now. It's just ready for the future deployment where it will go live at the moment. So you can put it ahead in time and make sure it's available. As said, same, all of these things work for the RDS farms tab. And what are the things that I still need to work in? I had an issue with percentage of machines. Sometimes it wasn't accepting it. I need to find it out. I want to package it as, as an MSI file, so you can install it even on your machine. I need to add more logging. There's a log file being saved. So you can, there's some basic logging there, but it needs more. Uh, on macOS, it always imports the keyring module that does the handling of the uh, credentials, but also when you don't want to have them sta saved. And Mac will always open up a pop-up, like, you want to, do you want to import this? Um, I console needed for, for running on Mac. Yeah, right now, the Mac implementation is a bit iffy. Maybe another rescheduled thing. And if you find anything after you use it, Drop me an email, I will try to fix it. Where can you get it? I will actually post it today, the blog post on my blog. Uh, the download is a second link on my stack. I don't have the Mac download yet and the GitHub uh, address, uh, probably at the end of the week or something, I will have the GitHub page ready. And that's it, thank you.